a, a community lead uh, in uh, in SSI. Uh, we are starting the webinar um, that is um, introducing the uh, fellowship program, a software sustainability fellowship program for 2014. I'll start first with some practicalities. So, um, if if you're here but you have you're experiencing any problems, uh, um, please click I need assistance. You can find it under the smiley face button. Um, or just type it in the chat area, or if you cannot do any of this, email me to the email that uh, you can see on the screen. So you can see things, but you cannot do anything. Just let me know, and I'll try to um, fix the problem without disrupting the webinar. But I hope that um, everything works for everyone. Uh, now, um, the way we're going to be working here is um, that um, the presenters are given the audio access, so you can hear the presenters, but not all participants are uh, given the audio access. So if you want to ask a question, please type it into the chat area. Uh, if you think that the question is way too long or you really, really need to discuss something, then um, please raise your hand. Again, you can find that under the smiley face button. And um, when we can, we will um, give you the audio access so that you can talk, actually. But um, if possible, please use the chat area for questions and comments, as I mentioned. Uh, we are recording the webinar, so the webinar will be available online. Um, hopefully, the technology won't fail us. Um, and so, if you cannot stay with us for the whole duration of the webinar, uh, you will be able to catch up uh, afterwards. And uh, if you're a Twitter user, uh, we are under Software Saved, and you can tweet about the webinar and about uh, the matters that we're going to be discussing here. The goals of this webinar is, uh, first of all, to introduce the fellowship program, the Software Sustainability Institute fellowship program. So we're going to talk about um, what are the general assumptions and what are the general purposes of the program. But we're also going to talk about, um, and we're going to show you some examples. We're going to, we're going to also um, enable the, the current fellows, uh, fellows 2014, to talk about their experiences. Uh, and so you will be able to learn more about the fellowship. And I encourage you to ask questions. We will have a Q&A session at the end. Uh, you can ask all the questions then. But if anything comes to your mind um, right now or, or earlier before the Q&A session, just put it down in the, in the chat area. Uh, we want to ask, answer all your questions. We want to clarify anything that may be unclear. Uh, so we're here to, um, to make um, the concepts of the fellowship uh, clear to you and uh, make sure that you know everything you need to know. And of course, it's uh, also um, uh, getting to know each other. It's an opportunity for us to, to meet you, and it's an opportunity for yourself to, to meet us, to meet the, um, the SSI team members, as well as uh, some of the fellows 2014 who are here with us. Uh, we're going to start with the introduction uh, to the Software Sustainability Institute given by um, the Institute's director, Neil Chu Hong. Then uh, Shaib uh, is going to talk about the Fellowship Program 2014. And immediately after, you will hear from uh, four of our fellows, Robin Wilson, uh, Wilson James uh, Hetherington, Kyla Yakovino, and Nick Pierce. We're going to tell you about uh, how it is to be a, an SSI fellow. Uh, and then Shaib will um, introduce the fellowship uh, program 2014, so the program that we're going to be launching and uh, we're hoping you uh, you're going to be applying um, and uh, we're going to close with a Q&A session uh, and um, that's going to be an opportunity for all of you to ask questions um, about the fellowship and about the SSI and now I hand over to Shoaib. Hello everyone um, so the next person up on the agenda is Neil uh, our, the, the SSI director, and he'll be talking about uh, giving an introduction to the, to the institute. Thank you very much, Shoei. Thank you very much, Alexandra. Um, and welcome to everyone who's listening and watching this webinar. Uh, I'm extremely excited to be here at the launch of the SSI Fellowship 2014 program. When we first started off doing the fellowship program, our intention was maybe to connect with a few um, people 
a few researchers in different domains and understand more about the work they were doing and understand more about the challenges that each of those domains faced when it came to using uh, and making use of software. And over the years, what's happened is the program has grown and grown. We've recruited so many amazing people uh, and I've had the pleasure of having some great discussions, both formal and informal, with the fellows both in 2013 and 2012 and beyond. So what I wanted to do was not really talk so much about the fellowship program, which you'll get a great introduction to from Shoaib and from the current fellows, but to talk a little bit more about the other work that Software Sustainability Institute does, so you get an idea of how the SSI and the fellowship program work together. So the Software Sustainability Institute uh, is really a software in research. So software is pervasive in research. Uh, a few years ago, we undertook a set of small projects with a number of different researchers looking at things as diverse as ocean temperature modeling through to uh, cancer treatment and understanding the growth of populations in cities like Leeds. And in each of those different projects, what was apparent was how much the research relied on software, whether it was simulation and modeling, whether it was data analysis, or in some cases, merely to understand how better to manage the research process itself. But in all of these cases, small improvements to the software could have a big impact. So where we are looking at is trying to understand how people who are using and developing software as a part of their research can get better supported. And part of the reason behind this is because we know that there are still challenges and barriers. There was a piece published in Nature a few years ago um, called Computational Science, Why Scientific Computing Does Not Compute. Uh, and it relied very much on some work that had been done by uh, a group led by Joe Haney who were looking at how scientists develop and use scientific software. And it was quite scary. Whilst, uh, so this was a survey of nearly 2,000 different researchers across a number of different disciplines. And what it showed was that whilst scientists were certainly spending many, uh, much more time developing software than five years ago, very few scientists had a good understanding of concepts like software testing. Um, so what we have is an, is an interesting uh, challenge in that we have widespread use of software, but not necessarily widespread knowledge of software in research. And this isn't to say that what we're looking for is for all scientists and researchers to become computer programmers. But how do we ensure that we understand enough about the different areas of science and the challenges that they have uh, using and extending software and making sure that everyone in a different team, from wet lab scientists to computational scientists to field scientists to the software developers to the architects to the managers, um, even all the way through to the marketing departments at universities, understand enough about the vocabulary of software that we are all talking the same language. So this is the re part of the reason that we set up the Fellows Program, and it's certainly the main reason that we have the Software Sustainability Institute. So the Software Sustainability Institute uh, is a national UK facility for cultivating world-class research through software. We're funded primarily by the Engineering and Physical Sciences Research Council, but our remit is to work with research groups across all different disciplines in the UK. And basically, our belief is that better software leads to better research. So what we try and do is provide expertise and services to researchers, both individually, as a research group, as universities and scientific consortia, and uh, on a wider scale through things like our website, our blog, and our guides. And what we're aiming to do is support all of the researchers who are using software to enable them to do better research. So the way that we do this is split into four different themes. Uh, you're going to hear a lot more ab about the community engagement from Shoaib. We also have a consultancy group where we work with different projects, different researchers in funded collaborations 
and I'll describe one of these uh, in, a, in a moment. We have a policy and publicity team who create guides, um, identify case studies which are published, success stories, and also campaign in different areas where we believe that there needs to be more movement and more activity. And finally, we also undertake training. Uh, and as I said, there is still a gap in many cases between the understanding and the experience and the skills uh, and the people who need to use them. So we have a number of different courses that we provide to help bring people up to some foundational level uh, across a wide variety of different soccer related topics. So just to sort of finish off this presentation, I'm going to give you a few examples of the work that we do in the Institute and then take some questions. So as an example of the kind of consultancy that we might do, uh, we have worked recently with the Center for Computational Chemistry in Bristol on a project where they are developing new software to look at ligand binding. So ligand binding is the interaction effectively of proteins in different solutions. So in this case, uh, how flu um, viruses bind with other uh, proteins in water solutions. And the important thing here is because it, uh, the important uh, reason why we're doing this sort of research is to understand why different flu vaccines end up becoming uh, more or less uh, useful. So in this case, perhaps looking at the effectiveness of Tamiflu across different flu variants. Um, so they have different codes that have been developed to look at this. And the places that we are helping them are effectively trying to help, uh, trying to scale up the development teams. So the work that they've been doing has been led by a chemist who's also a software developer. Uh, and he's now started working with a software engineer who's been working on a lot of the scaling problems. And so what we've been doing is helping the two of them work together, understanding how to ensure that they have undertaken a good set of user testing, and connected them to the wider computational chemistry community so that the project itself can build and grow and get more and more users. Um, and as a result, um, this, these codes are, are continuing to be developed, um, and they've now gone on to, to have another couple of rounds of funding to take the uh, work that they've been further, and had a paper recently that has been the, uh, um, that has examined the effectiveness of Tamiflu by using one of the largest computational resources in the UK. So that's an example of some of the consultancy work that we do. Um, looking at the uh, policy work we do, as I said, a lot of the, um, the things that we, we give out to the general um, researcher are through our website. Uh, if you go to www.software.ac.uk, you'll be able to see what we have on offer. Um, things like case studies. So here we have something on astonishingly fast-fitting models to big data sets, which has been looking at uh, the problem of trying to do medical imaging. We also provide guides and briefing papers. So we have a number of guides, for instance, um, on what to do if you suddenly inherit scientific code. So you've just joined a new research group, and your supervisor has given you a set of software to work with, but the only person who has some idea about that has already left. Where do you start? So by providing different guides in different areas, for instance, in how to um, promote your material, how to do a good presentation, how to understand how to use version control repositories, and so on. We try and provide materials that everyone can use. We also undertake a number of policy campaigns. So in particular, one which the fellows this year have been very involved in is the idea of career paths for people who are both researchers and developers, for those who are developing both uh, traditional papers, but also software as a research output. And there have been a series of articles um, starting off at uh, one of our key events, the Collaborations Workshop, almost a year and a half ago, and going through the last year as a number of different um, debates that have been taking place in the public, um, which have led most recently to an article in the Times Higher Education 
and a workshop that took place yesterday in Oxford where 60 research software engineers came together to decide what it is that they wanted to do to make um, their voice heard amongst the wider scientific community. So finally, um, I want to say a little bit about the training. You'll hear some of the fellows talk uh, about something called software carpentry. Software carpentry is an initi uh, international initiative to teach the basics of software engineering to computational researchers. Um, and we have been working with uh, trainers across the UK and across the world to develop um, and run all of these different three-day, two-day boot camps. So they're very, they're very quick, very intense, um, as you can see by the picture, uh, ways of making sure that everyone has a common understanding of computational science and software engineering. Um, and the numbers there are uh, probably a little bit old now. Uh, I think this year we've already run ourselves over 12, research, uh, 12 workshops and helped another 10 to become, uh, be run by other people. Across the world, there's now a workshop happening every week. The other thing we do for training is surgeries and other sessions at conferences. Uh, and one of our most popular ones is something called What Makes Good Code Good? where we get researchers together to discuss what they think is a good piece of software, what makes software usable for them, and what are the challenges for using software, and see whether they match the expectations and perceptions of researchers from other areas. So that's a very brief overview of all of the work that the SSI is involved in. Um, what, we, uh, what we probably um, would like to finish up saying on, on the work of the SSI is that it's always something that is ongoing. So we're always looking for new collaborators, we're always looking for new campaigns that we can help the community um, gather around, and we're always looking for new ideas for what guides and what topics we should be discussing on the website. So if you have ideas for this, um, please feel free to let us know. Um, and in particular, if you have ideas that you feel would be useful for taking forward uh, under the auspices of being an SSI fellow, this is your chance. So thank you very much, and I'll hand back to Shoaib. OK, thanks very much, Neil, for that introduction. Um, if there's any if there's any quick questions for Neil, uh, feel free to type them into the chat. Um, otherwise, um, we'll just go on to the next presentation where I'll be talking about the Fellows 2013 program. Okay, we'll go on to the Fellows uh, 2013 program. Okay, so I'm going to give a brief uh, overview of um, activities during the Fellows 2013 program. So uh, don't be alarmed by the next slide. Uh, this is uh, talking about the 2013 program, remember, not, th not this program. So there's one slide on the recruitment. Um, so we had a launch event, uh, and applications were open back in September 2012. Um, this, to, to choose the fellows, this involved an internal, internal and external assessment. What that means is we it wasn't just members of the Software Sustainability Institute who are on the assessment panels. It's also people out in the community that we've got links to um, who are out, who, who are who take part in assessing candidates. And it is a it is a two-stage pro process. In terms of numbers, there was from last year's program there was 123 applicants, 26 were shortlisted, and 15 were chosen. They were announced back in December 2012. And how the funding works is we fund them from January 2013 to March 2014. So they get to use their allotment um, of, of money during that time period. Uh, but the requests have to come in between January and December. So the fellows for 20, these are the fellows for, for 20, 2013. Um, as you can see, there's a mix of early and mid-career uh, fellows uh, funded from all sorts of different funding councils, working in uh, a varied set of varied set of domains. Uh, 
so we've got representation of the the actual fellows. Uh, they cover uh, medical sciences, 3D imaging, epidemiology, ICT, uh, so physical computing and education, environmental science. We've got a lot, a very strong representation of environmental science, uh, volcanology, virtual pa virtual paleontology, glaciology, snow physics, etc. Uh, and computation and computational support, uh, and information applications, international development, data visualization, uh, and the humanities, uh, textual classification, sociology, and anthropology. And uh, now, not now, what's not mentioned on this slide is we've got quite an interesting split between researchers um, who use software and develop and what we call research software engineers or um, representation of research software engineers who are not necessarily focused on their own research, but they're focused on supporting research. Okay, so up, up to now, the, the 2013 fellows have uh, been to a number of different conferences. Uh, and one of the things we get them to produce is conference intelligence. When they go to these conferences, uh, they write down who they've met, uh, who's key in their field in terms of software, what software is being used, what maybe some of the big science questions and how software is helping helping those. Uh, is, is there any things that they give the SSI as recommendations for what we should be doing? We can use this information to help guide new blog posts, new articles, uh, or, or, or other processes. So we have the... Uh, um, we had the JISC uh, Research Technologist Workshop um, and uh, the Remote Sensing uh, Workshop. The Remote Sensing Workshop was interesting, uh, although Robin will talk about that about that later. Where we they're not just meetings where we, we send people. Sometimes we'll uh, if, if the fellows want to talk about something specific like reproducible research, we will um, set up additional meetings with them prior to them going to these events where we can uh, perhaps help them. Uh, help them create material. Another aspect of the uh, fellows and what the fellows have been involved in and have then expressed an interest in during their application stage was taking part in software carpentry. Um, as Neil mentioned, software carpentry is an international movement to help scientists not necessarily become experts in uh, computational techniques, but uh, allow them to become moved from the space of being um, beginners or unaware of certain computational techniques to becoming competent, knowing where to look and being somewhat familiar. So a number of our fellows, uh, Robin Wilson uh, helped organize a large workshop in, South, in, the, in Southampton and Alex Chartier in the University of Bath and there's a number of them, a couple of them planned um, and this is where the fellows themselves are not necessarily just there as helpers but local organizers. And these can have a different focus. Sometimes they're focused on broad uh, techniques, uh, for example, version control and testing and the use of more flexible tools like uh, languages like, like Python or, or different approaches like using SQL databases, automating people's work using shell scripts. Um, although Mike is working on a, a specific one for, for his area of domain around, around MATLAB. There's a number of workshops that the, the fellows have arranged and uh, I've supported them with. Um, this was a, uh, we feel, a pleasing development uh, in the sense that we they were not just um, attending events, but they were really make, trying to make a difference to their domain and either promoting best practice of software in their domain, promoting their own software, or gathering requirements about software in their domain or looking at the different tools around the software in their domain and so really try to make a, a difference to the people who are using software uh, and using computational techniques to drive their research forward. One of the large events for the community program uh, of SSI is the collaborations workshop. So this is an annual event which runs uh, every uh, approximately March in the year uh, and it hopes to bring together researchers 
uh, software developers, funders, publishers, and other people, sometimes commercial developers, uh, who are interested in uh, discussing the the concepts and the issues around research, uh, around software and research, uh, and its application. Um, so the fellows will, the fellows presented, and uh, different. Uh, audience members also presented, so people give lightning talks, a few minutes presentations about a particular area of interest, and then there's uh, discussion topics which are suggested by, by the people, by the participants, uh, and which are then, people will also have a collaborative idea session where people, uh, teams of, uh, sub-teams of the, the, the attendees will come up with an idea. For example, this year we had some, a team come up with uh, Run My Code. Uh, which is a, a repository which helps reproducible research in terms of running people's software somewhere where people can have their software tested, um, and also uh, and also networking uh, opportunities to meet for researchers to meet developers. Um, some people, depending on their career stage, are in the process of moving, of winning research grants and trying to expand their team and understanding how to bring software developers into their research teams to enhance their research and also it helps researchers, it helps software developers understand where they fit in. So it's held in the in Oxford. We hope to hold the next one uh, in 2014 in Oxford and we're going to have a focus um, on reproducible research and hopefully also have a hack day attached to allow people to um, really develop their ideas. Uh, not just not just uh, produce uh, a synopsis of their idea it should be interesting and fun so one of the things we uh, did at the collaborations workshop was we really much the, the fellows take a we don't it's not command and control with the fellows it's, it's very much collaborative and we ask them how the fellowship program should be should be run what ad adaptations to make uh, and one of the interesting things that they said was we'd like to keep you on as alumni, uh, and they said no. Actually, we'd like to stay, remain as fellows. So um, we we run a continual fellowship program. So once your fellowship is complete, as it were, where you have your own set of money, um, then for subsequent years, there's a communal pot of money uh, which you can bid into. Um, we tend to be a bit more, a bit stricter on on what we fund that way, just a bit in terms of it seeing it's a slightly stronger emphasis for SSI but it keeps people involved uh, we, we can ask we ask for your opinions which can affect which articles we write what workshops we support uh, and whether we actually paid to to help you attend and organize an event um, it also forms interesting uh, form of networking so it allows the win-win to continue so don't think of the fellowship as just just one year potentially, it's potentially opening you up to uh, more influence uh, uh, and, and help in the, in the longer term. We also ran a, a six monthly fellows meeting. Um, there's a, um, this was a very interesting meeting. We were, we were thinking we, we'd get a lot of criticism about how we ran the program, but everyone was quite happy about how we were, how we were running the program. Um, we discussed uh, the Fellows Anthology, which I will talk about soon, uh, shortly. Um, it allowed people to give ideas about how the future fellowship program should run, um, and it allows us to, to plan. And it, it was quite it was interesting from a networking perspective. One of the fellows, um, uh, Kevin Doyle, who's not here t today, was um, He's very much into devices and microcontrollers, so it was interesting to watch the discussions between himself and some of the other fellows talking about how they could make devices that would help the digital humanities or cheaper devices that would help snow research, um, as well as as well as other fields, and even some particularly hard problem problems were being discussed, like characterization of snow crystals, where somebody from 3D Imaging, uh, Richard Abel. One of the fellows has had some interesting ideas about perhaps how that could be taken forward. So it's it's not just the fact that you're going to win a you you you're going for this money to win a fellowship. You're also um, it's also the team uh, the the set the network of fellows that you'll be interacting with, which could really um, aid your research and aid your thinking, which is a a big benefit. Now we only contractually required people to to sign up to uh, s uh, s 
this one meeting, the collaborations workshop on this one meeting, but they actually requested another meeting. So we're hopefully having another fellows meeting at the nine months time. And we may even set up a uh, an annual meeting uh, of the of the fellows. So that would include all the fellows, uh, the, the the fellows that we have active at the moment, as well as previous fellows. So this is. Uh, increasing a sense of community and people really who are really active in their research and also very keen on software in, in their in their domain. So one of the things that we the fellows are working on and that actually came out of the fellows themselves as opposed to what we'd what we told them to do or what we'd suggested to them to do was um, the creation of an anthology, an anthology which, uh, or what how, how they'd like to term it, a little book of software struggles. And it was really about um, different researchers' experience of software in their domain. We started off asking them about, uh, you know, what's your view of, of software in your domain, something authoritative. But they said that that's perhaps too uh, arrogant, for want of a better phrase. It was really the type of information. People took different approaches, but one of the approaches was the type of information you'd, you'd want to tell PhD student coming into your domain about software in, in your domain or individual research journeys um, or a kind of like watch the you know a guide to avoiding the the, the pitfalls um, and so the fellows are, are be working on these book chapters and the work is is progressing so I hope to have something published by around the collaborations workshop next year and we are have got um, we are there's a potential here for we're inviting authors, uh, inviting authors also. There are also future conferences. Um, the the fellows they put in event requests uh, and they describe what they want to do. But we tend to have informal discussions first if the fellows are interested in a, uh, attending a particular event or organising a particular event. They tend to have informal contact with the community team, um, and the community team. Uh, on, the, on the community mailing list, which comprises myself, uh, Alexandra, and Neil, um, where we can have all, all manner of discussions around the way funding works, what's in, what's out, in terms of things that should be funded or can't be funded, uh, and also where there's extra effort needed in terms of wanting representation from the SSI, so the SSI will come along and uh, try to help where, where possible. I um, don't want to steal the thunder from Robin, who will be talking about this, but we were quite excited from our perspective that a number of the fellows had got together and uh, organized a town meeting at the uh, at the AGU, which is Annual General, uh, uh, at the uh, it's, uh, Earth Systems Meeting, sorry, I've got the name, Earth Systems Meeting in, in, Cal in California this year. Um, I will let uh, Robin tell you how, how many people are likely to attend this meeting. It's quite a large meeting. Um, and this is a great opportunity for the fellows uh, working in a, in, a, in, a, in a, I wouldn't say the same domain, but related domains, uh, to come together and talk about and promote software sustainability. Um, OK. If, unless there's any questions. Um, I will be moving on to the, the next person. Thank you, Robin, American Geophysical Union Conference. That slipped my mind. Uh, I'll be moving on to Robin now. Just let me. Okay. Oops. So Robin, Hi. please take it away. Right. Hi, everyone. Hopefully you can hear me. Um, if you can't, please say something. I'm going to just talk for five, ten minutes about why I think uh, that being a SSI fellow is awesome, uh, why I think you should do it, and, and some of the experiences and opportunities that I've had uh, over the last sort of nine months, a year or, or so. Um, just to introduce myself, first of all, I'm, I'm Robin Wilson. Um, I'm a PhD student at the University of Southampton at the moment, and I'm working on um, research about satellite imaging and uh, trying to monitor air pollution from satellites. And so I'm quite a sort of early, early career stage person in academia. Um, and one of the great things that I'll talk about in, in a moment about 
the SSI fellowship scheme is, is the range of, of different career stages people are at. So we've got people who are at a very early stage in their research, like me, and um, people who are far, far later on, and you can share things really across the sort of career boundaries. But um, just to sort of start off, I thought I'd give a sort of few reasons as to why this year has been so awesome, as I said in my title, and then go into a few specific things I've done. So the first thing, really, and you've kind of seen these pictures before, Shui sort of preempted me with that, really, um, is that I've got to interact with a really great group of people. So I've um, met all these different fellows who come from such a broad range of fields, and I, I never would have met half of them, or most of them, in, in my career otherwise. But they're all interested in similar things, they're all really interesting people, and we get some really great conversations. We all care about stuff, but we all have different perspectives that we can that we can share. And so there's a really sort of great network there that I've managed to engage in, which has been really helpful. Um, obviously, the money side of it's been quite useful as well. Um, a lot of people will have sort of seen the adverts for this and gone, ooh, ooh, 3,000 pounds, great, that, that's money. Um, as Shweb said, it, and as people said earlier, it's not, you know, the money is very useful. But it's not maybe the, the main benefit of it. Actually, it, it's the sort of community development that, that really helps and the networking and the, and the contacts you build that's, that's really great. But the other thing that's really great, I'm going to embarrass some of these guys, particularly with their pictures, which admittedly I did take from the internet, um, which is, is the great support that you get from the Software Sustainability Institute. They, you know, they've got a dedicated team there who help and support you in, in any way they can um, and that really allows you to to make the most of your of your time as a fellow so basically putting all these three things together the, the great people in the fellowship scheme that the money which opens some of these opportunity um, and the um, great support that you get uh, um, I managed to take loads of really wonderful opportunities over the last year and, and really do some quite awesome things so um, to start off is one of the things that Shweb mentioned earlier. Um, I have been a member of the Remote Sensing and Photogrammetry Society, which is the um, UK society for my field, for a while. And um, last year, when was it? It was through Easter time, um, earlier this year really, um, I went up to Glasgow to their annual student conference and basically got a keynote presentation. It wasn't officially a keynote presentation because I wasn't an invited speaker as such. But basically, it was about 50 minutes, an hour, to talk to all of the PhD students who were there, all of the sort of early career researchers in my field, about software in the field, software sustainability, reproducibility, and, and the sort of issues that I felt were important. And the really great thing here was it wasn't them reading some sort of generic advice online somewhere or going to a sort of generic conference saying, guys, you ought to pay attention to this kind of stuff. I was standing there as one of them talking about things that they knew about, things to do with particular problems, with satellite imagery work, with GIS work, with, with particular stuff that we do. Um, and so these are just a few of the slides I, I, I um, used there. And as Shwebe said earlier, I had a, an online chat with um, Shwebe and, and Neil and, and a few other people about reproducibility and they gave me some more pointers to some of the things I could talk about. And that really helped. And overall the presentation went down really well. Um, and a number of people have contacted me since then, saying that they've been using the sort of ideas that I suggested about how the simple techniques you, know, you can apply to improve the reproducibility of your work, even if you're not using code, um, sim simple ways of um, producing sustainable um, code, sustainable data, and you know, people found it really useful and have really managed to apply that in their work. So that, that was a really great success, which was well thought of, definitely. Um, I've been off to various other places. Um, I went off to a great training workshop um, in Toulouse um, on a bit of software called DART, the Discrete Anisotropic Radiative Transfer Model. And this is really an example of one of the sort of win-win bits of the SSI fellowship. It was really great for me to go there because I wanted to use this software in my research, so I needed to learn how to use it. But also it was really interesting from the SSI's point of view and I, I gave them a very very detailed possibly almost too long conference intelligence report back from there talking about this software and how it was very sustainable in, in a number of ways how it encouraged reproducible research how the incredible complexity of the of the simulation package was sort of distilled in, in, in ways that worked very well 
Um, the couple of top couple of images on this slide are, are examples of uh, the software interface on the left and, and one of the outputs on the right. Basically, it, it simulates satellite images with various things in it. There's a satellite image, obviously, of, of trees, and you can change various parameters like the amount of water in the trees and, and that kind of stuff, um, and look at how much you can, how well you can observe that from satellites. And it's been going for about 20 years. This this tool, and so it's very interesting learning how they've made it sustainable over that time, um, how they've got you know, everything running through text-based configuration files so that you can run it on, on supercomputers as well without having to deal with the, the GUI that you've got here, and how they've managed to work around the politics of, of, of software development that um, we were talking about earlier as well, that um, has you know, allowed them to develop this through various changes of research budgets, various changes of in research funding and, and grants and so on. Um, I've been off to the collaborations workshop as well, which um, I won't talk too much about because Shui talked about it earlier, apart from to say that I sort of got on the train to go to the collaborations workshop and thought, okay, well, you know, this will be a, you know, it'll be an interesting, fun couple of days, but you know, it's not going to be particularly relevant to my PhD. It's not going to get a huge amount of my research done, my work done, and I'm going to have to kind of say to my supervisor when I get back, well, you know, sorry, I kind of took a few days off and did some cool stuff, but it, it wasn't really relevant. Actually, within two hours of getting there, I bumped into someone who was really keen on funding some work that I wanted to do. We've currently got a funding application in place with him, and it was at this meeting that the four of us fellows got together to start planning our AGU trip. So, um, you know, it actually was much more useful than I thought it would be, and I'm really looking forward to going next year. Uh, the other thing I want to mention is I'm actually off tomorrow morning, getting up nice and early to go up to London to a meeting at the Royal Society all about citizen science, which in fact links back to the, the funding proposals I've got in at the moment to engage the public in, in gathering measurements that can be used to validate satellite measurements. Um, and there I'll be looking really at how we can develop scientific software that can be used to it can be used with the general public, that the general public can interact with, but it's still scientifically valid, but allows them to still get, a, get an idea of what we're doing and what's, what's going on with the data that, that they're helping to collect. Um, as I said, I've been involved in various bits of training. Shweb said that I organised a software carpentry event at, at Southampton, which had about 50 people turn up. Uh, you can see me looking a little bit worried in the right-hand corner of that photo, um, just because I'm trying to make sure that you know, the coffee's got there for the break and, and that the lunch has all arrived and everything. But overall, that was a, a great two days. People found it very useful. Um, I found it very eye-opening. And um, there's actually another colleague of mine at Southampton is arranging. She's not actually an SSI fellow. She's just she just went to this event and found it so great that she's now trying to organise one specifically for the PhD students in that particular faculty that she's working in to try and really up the skills of of computational scientists within oceanography. Um, another thing that's really helped through the SSI fellowship and is particularly useful for me at sort of my career stage is getting me out there and getting me sort of known by people and, and some of my ideas spread around a bit which you know, can only be helpful when applying for jobs after my PhD and trying to make a way for myself in, in the field. Um, before I started this year in fact I was the editor of the national magazine for RSPSOC, this national society for my field uh, called Sense which you can see a, a cover of on the left here and so I managed to um, get a number of bits to do with software and software sustainability into Sense this year, including an interview with the uh, Software Sustainability Institute's publicity officer, which went down quite well in the field. And um, I think the, I think looking briefly at the chat box, um, Neil just um, posted a link to a blog post that I wrote, which you can also see a little bit of on the screen. Um, a very simple idea that I had um, about trying to encourage the citation of software um, by adding a simple file just like a readme file that you'd have maybe with your software anyway, but a file called citation instead that just tells you, you know, this is how you go about citing this software. Because often people know that they should cite software. It, it, obviously it will help me. I've, I've published a paper on a bit of software that I've written. It's really going to help me if I can get some good citations for that. But people often don't know what to cite. They, you know, maybe they need to email the author to do so. That kind of makes them not bother to do so because they can't be bothered to you know, faff around sending emails and looking online. And so this is actually a really simple way that hopefully will increase the um, cit citability, as it were, of, of software. Um, that's most of what I wanted to say, but I just wanted to finish on a, on a slide that's slightly out of date, in fact. Uh, um, 
if it actually goes to it, there we are. Um, this slide says that hopefully I'll be doing an AGU town hall. Um, in fact, as of about three o'clock yesterday afternoon, we found that our application had been accepted. And uh, Shreve mentioned this earlier, but I'll, I'll give you a few more details. Basically, the American Geophysical Union is an enormous conference in America that's about anything to do with sort of geography, geophysics, and, and so on. So it includes um, bits about climate, glaciology, rivers, deserts, uh, extraplanetary stuff, all the stuff about the Mars rover that you, uh, Curiosity, that you probably heard about in the news about a year ago. Um, a lot of those presentations came out at, at AGU. So it's a huge thing in the field. Uh, you can see a little, little picture there of a tiny bit of the poster conference, per poster session at this conference. It's enormous. There's 25,000 people predicted to attend this year. And uh, by four of us getting together, four of us who are sort of some of the people who are working on the sort of environmental, geography, geophysics sort of side of things, um, we're going to be running a, a, this town hall session there. And a town hall session is basically a, a discussion session. So when you've got 25,000 people, trying to get them all to talk to each other is, is quite challenging. Um, so there's various of these sort of discussion sessions where people who are interested in a certain topic can come along from such a broad variety of fields, from climate and glaciology and deserts and satellite imaging and planetary geology and, and so on, and talk about the kind of generic problems they have. And we're going to do one about software and try and really spread some of these ideas that the SSI and obviously ourselves are very keen on, such as reproducibility, sustainability, software development practices, citation of software, all that kind of stuff. And this is one of the best places in the world to do that. So, um, and so it should be a great thing to do for, for the cause of, of software sustainability. But also going back to this win-win um, situation, it's a great thing for me as well. You know, without the SSI funding me, there was no way I could afford to go right to the other side of America and, and go to this huge conference. But obviously, as well as doing this town hall, I'll also be presenting some of my own research, meeting some of the leaders in my field, getting myself out there a bit, and that will be a really, really useful thing for me to do. So it's definitely a win-win. I think the sort of the key thing that I want to leave you with um, before I sort of you know, move on to the next fellow to give their experiences is just how much this has been a win-win from both sides. It's obviously helped the SSI. It's helped software sustainability and reproducibility as a sort of cause in itself. But it's really helped me more so than just the money. But the whole experience has given me this huge kick forward that I think will really sort of jumpstart my my career. So yeah, that's basically why I think the um, Software Sustainability Institute Fellowship was was awesome. So thank you very much. Back to you, Shwe. Excellent. Uh, thanks very much, Robin, for that, that excellent presentation. Uh, okay. So next up is uh, is James Hetherington. Um, just going to add James. Hello. Hi. Can people hear me? OK, James, we can hear you. So you want to take it away? OK, cool. Uh, hello, everyone. Um, this is going to be uh, very brief. Uh, just to talk about uh, the things that I thought were, were coolest about the fellowship for me, um, and focusing on you know the, the the sort of slightly later later career experience and sort of mid career fellow experience. A um, little bit about me: I run uh, UCL's research software development team. We work with researchers in all different groups to uh, help produce uh, some uh, you know good, reliable, readable, efficient uh, scientific software. Um, Link on the blog there. Uh, um, link on an opinion article I wrote for the SSI there, and this is just so you can click on if you want to. And our position paper that I wrote with some SSI people uh, last year about you know why research software engineers are useful things. Um, in terms of the fellowship, uh, you know I really just kind of wanted to say. Yes, okay, the three grand is really nice. Uh, I'm using it to go to supercomputing. Um, so that's good. But more importantly, the access to the SSI network and community has been enormously valuable to me. Uh, you know, the, 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 as everyone realizes in, in, in life and in, in research, the biggest problem we all face is obscurity and trying to make sure people have uh, heard of us and build, build our reputations. And uh, 
working with the SSI, SSI community has been enormously valuable on that for me, uh, from invitations to advise the uh, to advise GIST to uh, SSI uh, reblogging uh, our job adverts when I was recruiting my team, uh, which is you know really useful in generating some, some great applications, uh, to being invited to be on on the editorial board of the journal. Um, to you know, being on, and being on the program committee for for a workshop at Sig Computing, so so all of those things are, are, are enormously valuable. And so that, you know, it's the network of people that, that, that SSI uh, through Neil and others has been able to put me into, which has been immensely valuable to me. So I, I, I thanks very much indeed to, to the SSI for all those all those wonderful opportunities. Um, uh, you know, also of course working with the fellowship has been great. Um, you know, as somebody who's been uh, uh, through a few uh, a few a few struggles around being a sort of programming scientist, uh, being able to share those experiences with others and uh, serve as a warning to others, <laughs> as some might say, has been quite uh, has been quite good. Um, and the SSI fellows are a great bunch and keep coming up with cool stuff to do. Just as one caveat, of course, uh, when you get really busy, you can't be involved in everything all the cool people are doing. So so you do have to be. Um, to be to be somewhat selective, uh, but so many awesome opportunities. So uh, yeah, I guess you know um, uh, that's uh, that's uh, the things that I, I just wanted briefly to say. Okay, excellent. Thanks very much. Any any questions for uh, James at this stage? Okay, well, next up is um, is Kayla Jacobino. Okay, can everyone hear me? <clears throat> yes. Okay, great. Um, so my name is Kayla Jacobino. Um, I'm a PhD student at the University of Cambridge. Um, and I am a volcanologist, so I study volcanoes. Um, in my group and I use software in a number of ways in our research. And one of the unique ways that we use software is in extreme environments. And uh, so I'm going to talk a bit about uh, what um, my group has been doing over the past year or so and how SSI has helped us with that. <coughs> So as I said, I'm, I'm a volcanologist, uh, and as field scientists, we rely heavily on computers to collect and work with all of our data. Um, but one of the problems is that a lot of software engineers or developers don't understand the needs of field science. And moreover, field scientists don't understand how to create software. So there's this communication gap. Um, and my group in particular works in some pretty uh, strange places in the world, including four shown here, two in Chile, uh, you know, on a volcano in Antarctica, most recently on a volcano in North Korea. And we're bringing all of this research, this software with us to understand volcanoes, particularly um, studying their degassing. So we use instruments to measure the gases that are coming out of these volcanoes and also um, analysis back in the lab uh, to get the chemical compositions of the volcanic products, like the volcanic rocks that are erupted. But as I said, there's this, there's this gap between developers and, and field scientists, particularly with uh, understanding how to use software and how to create it. Um, so one of the things that, that we do in our group is we create software for our own group, uh, for our own uses. And one of the things we've done with that is uh, this past February and March, uh, my group uh, called The Volcano Files. Uh, you can find us on volcanofiles.com. Uh, and the SSI uh, supported us in our expedition to Chile in 2013. And there we met with um, the, with OBS, which is the Observatory of the Southern Andean Volcanoes in Chile. And they monitor a lot of the active volcanoes, all of the active volcanoes in the southern part of Chile. We worked with them uh, on a knowledge exchange. Um, so we brought our instruments and our software and showed them how we use software uh, and how we use our homemade tools to monitor volcanic exchange. Um, they gave us um, a support with logistics, uh, planning for field work, and in addition, they even set up a seismometer for us on top of the volcano while we were there. Um, so it was a big uh, collaborative effort um, exchanging knowledge between the observatory scientists and us, uh, which can be two very different ways to approach volcano science. 
Um, so that was uh, something that was supported by the SSI this year that we couldn't have done without them. Um, and it is very helpful. Um, another thing, as I mentioned, not only do we do data collection in the field, but then we do a lot of data analysis back in the lab. And this is a whole other way um, that we work with software. So it's a completely different domain, um, which is what more people are used to doing. Um, but again, we have these huge data sets we've collected in the field, and we, anal we an analyze them in various different ways. And one way the SSI has helped us uh, in this uh, angle is by supporting my recent trip to the Goldschmidt Geochemistry Conference in 2013. Um, so this here, on the, this picture here on the left is a picture of my poster presentation, which was a presentation of some software uh, being developed by myself and another colleague in our group um, used to analyze volcanic data sets in the lab. Um, and this was a great opportunity to speak with people uh, in geochemistry who are using techniques or using other techniques to monitor the same kinds of things, um, to get feedback on what kinds of things people are looking for in a software tool like this, because this is something we're developing for our group, but also that we want to uh, promote and give to the community as a whole. Um, so it was a great opportunity for us to network with the community and ask them what they would want in a software tool. Um, and there will be a blog post on that on the SSI soon, um, as just returned from that trip, so it's not written yet, but it will be on there soon. Look for that. Um, in addition, this has been mentioned earlier, but I just came back from Oxford yesterday where there was a very uh, good uh, workshop on research software engineers and how they can be promoted in the role that they do, uh, which are essentially software engineers that work for research, supporting research, and also doing their own research. Um, so it's kind of an emerging group of people that don't have much of a voice yet because it's such a new thing. Um, so we, we tackle issues like how, how to recognize these people and the work that they do um, and how to fund them, um, how to build a community around these people, things like that. Um, in addition, next week there will be um, a polar research workshop having to do with software in polar research, uh, hosted by the UKPN, the UK Polar Network, and by SSI here in Cambridge, um, which, which I'll also be attending. So these are just a few examples, and there's been many more events as well that I've attended um, that I haven't put on myself, but I've attended that other fellows have, have done, or that, that SSI itself has done. Um, so again, just this is just a little overview of a few of the things that SSI has helped me with um, over the past year, um, where it, they've been an, an invaluable support for our group. Um, creating our own software, networking with people, networking within the fellows group, um, as well as connecting us to the community as a whole, both through the, this field work and uh, also th through our own conferences and other conferences that I've been able to attend. Um, so I'll, if there's any questions for me, I'll be happy to answer them. Otherwise, on to the next fellow. OK, thanks very much, Kayla. Excellent. Um, if you don't have any questions on your mind right now, there will be an opportunity uh, in the panel Q&A to bring up any questions that you might have. OK, so next we have um, Nick Pierce, He's a fellow in anthropology. Right, right, hi. How are we doing? I assume everyone can hear me. Um, first of all, apologies, I don't have any uh, slides. Um, I, ha I hadn't thought um, I hadn't thought to do that, I'm afraid. So you can just, I guess you can look at Kayla's last slide while I talk. Um, I'm Nick Pearce, and I'm um, actually a, t a teaching fellow uh, at Durham University. Um, and my background is actually as a sociologist, but I guess I kind of hang out more with anthropologists now. Um, and in the past, I've worked in on uh, e-science uh, projects, which are kind of very focused on um, big tools, developing uh, big tools for scientists. And I was working on kind of how to a uh, project on how to kind of get social scientists more interested in that. And I always kind of thought that was a bit, um, a little bit the wrong way around, really, kind of starting with the technology. But it was actually a, a digital research uh, conference. Um, that I um, found out about the SSI, uh, met Simon Hetrick, in fact, over dinner, 
and um, learned about the Software Sustainability Institute Fellowship, which is kind of turning turning that on its head. So it's very much based on researchers what they what they're doing or what's happening inside um, research departments uh, and trying to support that. So um, you know, pretty quickly thought that was a great idea. Um, and thought it was important to ensure there was a good spread of uh, good disciplinary spread um, throughout. So um, I suggested um, a kind of quite broad um, kind of proposal based a bit on sociology and a bit on, on, on anthropology and trying to kind of promote some of these kinds of um, practices and, and the use of software and developing software within those uh, within those fields. And I've had a, I've had a great time um, uh, as a fellow. Um, I think it's really interesting to hang out with people from very different um, disciplinary backgrounds, but who've got very similar kinds of concerns. Um, so, so that was good. And I, I think there's kind of been three, maybe four concrete um, outcomes that I've, that I've managed to come up with since I've um, been a fellow. The first is actually um, within uh, sociology, um, there's quite a lot of scope for tools like um, web scraping, so I just put a link up on the in the chat thing, um, and I was able to uh, get somebody up from UAE to give a workshop about web scraping for social scientists um, that was was really, really popular and was really, um, was really interesting, and that's, you know, that's a different level of kind of, um, you know, software development competence or whatever, I know that's very much the first step really, doing a kind of few lines of Python, yes, scraper wiki and that kind of stuff. Um, but I see that as very much kind of starting to um, develop programming and coding skills within social scientists who don't usually think of themselves as, as programmers. And I know that um, a few of the people who were at that workshop have gone on to do little bits of code to kind of test out some hypotheses and stuff like that. So that's really, um, that's worked out really well. Um, the second thing that this fellowship enabled me to do was actually um, go to um, Australia uh, and speak to the people there about um, uh, digital sociology. And what was what was really good about the way that the exercise kind of set up is that I, I mentioned that quite early on and got a kind of semi agreement to say, yeah, we can support that. And with that support, I was able to get more funding from somewhere else, um, which kind of was, was really, really useful um, and, and really made for it a fantastic trip um, where I got to go to quite a lot of universities. I, I think I went to nine universities um, while I was out there, and I'm hoping that that will lead to a future uh, uh, bid to to go back and and um, uh, from some of, from beyond the SSI, but go back and um, kind of deepen those links because there were some really good uh, links that I made while I was out there. Um, and the third uh, kind of outcome of the um, of the fellowship was a, a computational anthropology uh, workshop, which I did just um, just last week uh, at, here at Durham, where we got a bunch of people together, um, different anthropologists from from Durham and Kent mainly, um, but from across the kind of spectrum. I mean, anthropology is quite a broad spectrum, from you know people who are kind of biological anthropologists through to archaeological and, and social and cultural uh, anthropologists. But we had, and we had kind of representatives from all of those different groups in the room, but they're all united by the fact that they use software um, and different kind of software tools in their research. And I think what was really interesting um, there is that, you know, there's, there's, a, there's a couple of guys who've been developing bits of software um, to, to meet specific needs. And then those um, bits of software kind of was just totally dependent on that one person. So he was putting them up on SourceForge or, or GitHub, or whichever fully open, you know, openly licensed, but there wasn't that kind of that, that kind of um, community of people to develop those tools. So it's a classic kind of sustainability, software sustainability um, issue. So, um, you know, that was really good to get a, a bunch of people in a room to sort of say, well, actually, yeah, we, we'd really like these tools to be uh, developed and um, we're going to be working with the SSI to try and, and see what we can do to kind of make sure that those tools that, you know, have been used in a wide range of research um, can kind of get taken further forwards and kind of get that extra push into sustainability, which is what we're hoping for. So we've just put in a call, uh, put in a proposal under the uh, open call, um, open call uh, program that, that showed uh, mentioned earlier. And I guess the fourth um, 
thing that, that I've been working on um, with another fellow fellow, uh, Adam uh, Crimble, uh, is a, an edited book about software um, in research. And so I think we have about 10, 12 um, contributions so far. More are always welcome from those listening. Um, and by, by all means, get in touch with me uh, directly um, should you want to discuss that further. Um, but that's shaping up to be quite an uh, interesting and quite good um, book, which, which will kind of tell the stories of um, the individual stories of different people in, in a wide range of fields, a wide range of, um, and a wide range of uh, institutions, and hopefully even um, a few countries as well, the different kind of stories of people trying to code, develop code um, you know, within an academic context, which is, relates to some of the issues that um, Chauvin and Neil mentioned earlier, where you know, it's not always um, valued highly. In, in fact, that's kind of what happened you know, with, with the anthropology um, stuff. And I think there was a quote, which I've got in my blog post, and I can't remember now, but something like, you get burned as a witch for using, uh, you know, developing software in social anthropology, which is quite, quite, quite what made me laugh anyway. So um, yeah, I guess uh, you know I've had a pretty busy, uh, pretty good year, and I've really enjoyed. Um, I've really actually enjoyed the, the kind of support and network really from the fellow, um, the other fellows, and and from the SSR, who are a great bunch of people um, to work with and, and to work for. And um, yeah, I'd, I'd certainly recommend um, other people uh, going for it. And I think it'd be, it's really important to. Um, to maintain the kind of broad as many disciplines as possible, I think, because everyone's at different kinds of um, different kind, everyone's at different disciplines are at different kinds of stages in terms of their uptake and use of coding um, tools, and I, I think it's really important to, to to make sure it's not just a narrow focus on the natural sciences uh, and to have some other other voices in there as well. So I hope that um, that, that that continues because I hopefully I've contributed uh, to the wider discussions. So I think. I think that's kind of um, that's kind of me. If anyone's got any questions, obviously I'm very happy to uh, answer them. Unless they're specific coding questions, in which case I'm. Well, excellent. Thanks very much, Nick. And uh, uh, and it's important to, to to reiterate that we do uh, cover all the computational usage uh, in, 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 in the research space. So we're not just focused on sciences, we're uh, you know, strong showing from the humanities as well, as well as people who support that. Okay, uh, well, next up is, uh, next up is me, uh, and I'll be talking about the uh, Fellowship 2014 program. Okay, so Fellowship 2014. So, why is the Institute inst uh, interested in fellows? Uh, well, I think uh, the fact that you've seen the the influence and the effect that the fellows have had, uh, not only for themselves but also for us, as uh, is evidence in itself. But just to to reiterate, uh, so the Institute's all about better demand. Well, all about better research through better software. So we believe that. A better research is possible through better software. So we really need to understand uh, what the important pieces of software are, what the important challenges are, as Nick alluded to, where different uh, where different fields are at different parts in their curve and of adoption of computational techniques. And having fellows on board really helps us uh, focus our consultancy engagements. Uh, which policies we should have, for example, the policy of the research software engineer, and is that is that important? And we think it's important, but our, our experiences with, with engaging with the community more, so that it, it is it, it, it always has a very large resonance, and also future community work. So the aim is to really support like-minded people in research organisations who understand the importance of software, not just that they understand the importance of software, but they want to promote more sustainable software practice either in their own domains or in their uh, own institutes as well. Uh, and we believe that people at different career stages uh, have, have, uh, have something to offer. So who are we looking for? Well, you saw some very good examples in, uh, in terms of the, the fellows that we have this year. Um, 
but just to go through the categories and you know people who are equivalent stages is fine I mean well, we have a large focus of uh, on early career researchers people who are PhD students uh, and URAs people who are mid-career like lecturers or established RAs or those with other fellowships and also late uh, late career which are senior RA, RF, senior lecturers, readers, even professors um, who have applied. Um, so what are we looking for? We're looking for people across the RCUK kind of strategic domains. Uh, we have a specific, uh, we're always on the lookout for important uh, interesting EPSRC funded research because we're EPSRC funded but we're not limited to, to the people who are funded by EPSRC, as you saw from the, the list of fellows who are funded by all, all manner of all manner of sources, it's really we're interested in people from um, not only who are doing important research but also interesting research as well. Um, so people who have an interest in software, so that they can they're interested in identifying relevant software in their domain. They use software in their research. They may have been involved in technology standards. They might be developing their own codes. They might be interested in in the promoting the use of software in their domain. In, for example, in increasing the so the capability uh, of software practice in their domain. People who have uh, a little bit outspoken, perhaps with the blog and uh, with blogs and Twitter and, and other articles. Um, and this really helps us to to determine how and how the institute can help. So they, we're interested in people who are, you know, want to be we're natural champions of, of software. Uh, and uh, so these people need to have, uh, you know, been involved in, so what qualities uh, are we looking for? So people who've got either the practice or the, or, or a very strong signs of, you know, being good science communicators and blogs, public engagement, etc. Um, and they've contributed in their own research community. Obviously, we're uh, we're understanding that somebody who's you know in the first year of their PhD might not be the same as somebody who's in the fifth year of being in an RA. So those things are, are taken into consideration. Different people in different career stages are. We have guidelines to the reviewers to to review candidates accordingly, and also that they're linked and uh, they're embedded in at least one uh, in a, at least one research network. So they do have a uh, they're not just the researcher in the corner, although researchers in the corner are extremely important. But they also, some of their time, they have a they have a social personality, or maybe all of the time. Um, so, in terms of specific things that we're looking for from early career uh, candidates, are essentially people who have time and the inclination to contribute. There were a number of people who uh, were shortlisted last year. There was one professor and a couple of senior researchers. Who were just they they were shortlisted, but they were very honest. They said, "Look, we don't have the we're we're happy that we were shortlisted. We want to contribute, but we we don't have the time." Like fine, uh, because if you don't have the time, then it's not really it's not really worth uh, it's not really worth your time or our time. Um, people who uh, we're looking for people who are interested in traveling to conferences. Uh, people who are keen to meet other people and to gain intelligence about software and the domain, I, uh, they, uh, and gain information for themselves. Also, somebody who natural natural network or somebody who can network. Uh, they're interested in promoting the institute and its mission. I.e., there's nothing from the software sustainability's perspective that they disagree with. I guess a lot of researchers are they understand the importance of software in their research and uh, incre increasing people's ability to do research. Uh, promoting the people who help uh, the research through software, promoting reproducible science. I don't think you'd find many scientists against those, but I could be wrong. Um, they'd have to attend the annual collaborations workshop and perhaps optionally uh, interested in organizing software carpentry style event or, or workshop for their institute or domain. Mid-career, well, all of the things from the, uh, from the early career. Plus, a more of an emphasis on running workshops to promote software, uh, training, best practice, requirements gathering, or other things in their domain, uh, contribute towards policy, um, uh, get their views on, on policies that we're promoting and other, other policies which I think may be, may be important for us to pursue. Uh, 
there's sometimes sometimes uh, we think about their review of people from the early careers although to be honest we've not done that as much as we we thought we would uh, because of the really everyone's the, the the level at which the fellows have, have operated this year is uh, really really incredible um, people are willing to give a talk on the SSI and possible attendance at the SSI advisory board we did have one of the more senior fellows uh, attending the SSI advice report and uh, it really helped uh, it helps the Institute in the sense that they can see that we're engaging with real scientists uh, who are doing real stuff and who concur with some of the policies and some of the activities that we are doing uh, and the importance of those activities for example the collaborations workshop uh, what we expect from uh, later career uh, it's really more senior policy level work uh, and promotion of the Institute and its mission to other research leaders and uh, perhaps co-review uh, of, of some of the outputs uh, from others um, like I said we didn't have any really senior uh, researchers this year but if there are any listening uh, we would very much like to involve you in, in, the, in the policy side of things uh, and also the things which are uh, bef before this and mid-career, early career, if you're interested. Um, what do we expect from everyone? Well, we expect everyone to uh, give their suggestions. So these are really indications, things which are, are, are similar uh, in their, in terms of uh, similar types of things. Um, for example, there's many things that have come out of the fellowship this year which we've discussed in terms of fellows getting together to, to organize an event, uh, fellows organizing their own workshops around software, whether in the UK or internationally or on promoting the, the use of British software uh, and promoting uh, best practice in their domain. And um, uh, the, 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 the ontology as well and there have been there have been other examples as well we've uh, invited people to the advisory board we've asked people to certain fellows to attend other meetings uh, James for example has helped with the uh, computer what one of the the, the policies of the, the Institute is to help develop a computer driving license so we're helping people develop develop that and he was test driving this and being involved so it's it's really it's open to your suggestions about ways in which so, uh, software and research can be uh, enhanced by your involvement as a fellow. So those things that we will do. Um, I feel that we've been true to these, uh, and I uh, hope you agree. Uh, and it's, it's, it was heartening to hear the fellows talk about their experiences with us and seeing it as a very positive thing. Uh, so we will listen. Uh, we will be responsive uh, and we'll deal with you very much as one of the team it's not so much them and us it's you're doing this somebody's doing th something for software in their domain well that furthers the aims of the the Institute and we're all interested um, action intelligence trying to follow upon leads uh, supporting your work and idea as a fellow being fair and flexible where possible I mean the majority of ideas which come our way around we want this we would like this funded could this be funded and uh, what do you think of this? We, you know, we're very flexible and accommodating, uh, and we have a dedicated person. Actually, we have two dedicated people, and uh, to, to to handle requests. So, in terms of benefits for the fellows, as a fellow, what what could be the benefits of being involved? Well, you get to attend more conferences. Um, therefore, you get to meet more people, understand what's happening in your domain, it broadens your horizon as a as a as a as a researcher opportunities to present your work uh, and raise your own profile and thus raise your own profile um, really identify software in your domain that might help you think differently about the way you're doing your research uh, and really very much have your opinion heard either by uh, suggesting things to us or writing uh, blog articles uh, or uh, being involved in, in, in workshops in terms of mid it gives somewhat uh, teaching experience, um, publishing opportunities, uh, and a higher visibility uh, is possible with your institute, and uh, potentially with um, well, potentially coming in contact with new collaborators also. And for the senior person, um, it really allows you to 
if you if you're already concerned with if you ever got a concern around software and research it allows you to be an more of a thought leader in your area and it also gives you a platform to influence policy because we do have um, contact with people who, who set policy so if the more people it can help you be help uh, we could help you be a conduit to actually real influence um, so what's the timeline well uh, the timeline is applications are already open uh, that was open on the 6th of September uh, at the moment the application deadline is the 27th of September 5 p.m. prompt um, we by the 22nd of October shortlisted candidates should be announced so people get to know whether they made the shortlist and this is an important date the 13th of November the 13th of November there'll be a face-to-face -face selection meeting in Manchester so please do hold the date if you'd like if you're if you are applying if there are genuine reasons why you can't make this date um, at this stage or genuine reasons came come up then uh, then please get in touch uh, on the on the email which I will show you uh, soon um, and don't worry about access to the slides the, we, we will be publishing the slides and then the 27th of November will give offers out to fellows um, and the fellows have to agree to the fellows terms and conditions which aren't overly onerous all the fellows agreed last time and uh, it just gives time for the fellows to give us the information you know their picture a description of their research a bit more of a description about themselves so that we can help promote them when we officially announce uh, the fellows in, in December okay so some links um, if you go to uh, the fellowship program which is a, a link off the community tab uh, on www.software.ac.uk um, you'll see information about the program a link to the application form there's also an FAQ um, one of the causes of confusion uh, I think the only main major thing that's really worth mentioning at this stage anyway before the uh, question and answer session is that um, the fellowship supports fellows to travel run workshops to uh, get involved in policy to uh, it doesn't but what it doesn't do is it doesn't support salary so it's not there as a form of salary which you can then say well uh, it's going to help me write some software so it's not really for that there is another the, the if there is software that you're interested that you think need, would could do with extra development effort to get it over a, a sustainability uh, hurdle then uh, the SSI is open call is probably what you should be looking at but there's more details about that on the uh, on the FAQ um, as previously mentioned by Alexandra we are on Twitter as software saved and anything specifically about the fellows program uh, should go to fellows management at software.ac.uk um, and then we'll be able to handle those requests in a prompt manner okay um, I will now it's now time for the uh, uh, Q&A um, and the panel uh, I put the panel down as uh, myself uh, and and the fellows. Um, we can only have four people speaking um, using this webinar platform, so I will set the panel up now, and it'll probably be myself and the three three of the the, the three fellows that are listed. Uh, so please, as Alexandra stated, please do type your type your questions. Uh, just give us a a couple of moments to to set everyone up. Um, Okay, Alexandra, how's you on as a? That's interesting. Yep. That's interesting. How's you on? Hmm? I'm, not sure, I'm not sure it's supposed to have you on as. Okay, I'll have to take that back. No, no, you can um, um, if if you wish to. Add. Sorry. Um, I just have to add Robin back now, and then we should be good to go. Make a 
Okay. I think we have everyone. So, um, are you all unmuted? Robin, James, Kayla? Yes. Uh, I think I am. Can you hear me? Yeah, we can hear you. I can hear you, Robin. I can hear you, Kayla. Uh, James? Ah, oh, you're muted. Okay. So I'm if not you just... muted. Okay, I can hear you now. Okay, so we have a question from Mark. How much time is really required to do this? I would like to apply, but need to justify time spent to my work. Um, so, um, I'll ask Robin, how much, um, how much time? Um, sort of almost as much as you want it to be, but it doesn't have to be um, a huge, I mean, it, it has to be enough, but not a huge amount. And I haven't found it really disruptive to my work at all. I, I've never really ended up sitting down and thinking, oh, goodness, I've got to do SSI stuff now. That's a, that's a pain. Um, because of the sort of win-win relationship between things, I found that most of the things I've been doing for the SSI, I've wanted to be doing anyway. So um, it it hasn't really been a problem for me in the slightest. And it's just given me loads of opportunities to do, I suppose, more work, as it were, but more work that I'd jump at the chance of doing if I if I had the chance. Maybe Kayla or, or um, James want to chip in with a few bits of other views on that. Kayla, any comments on that question? Uh, yeah, uh, I agree. Uh, basically, what I was going to say is that uh, it, you can spend as much or as little time on it um, as you want when within reason, obviously. Um, and, and, and as Robin was saying, the things that you're spending your time on are, are, at least for me, were things that I was going to be doing anyway, that the experience is only enhanced by the support of the SSI and extra things that I wasn't aware of but still would have loved to go to, like some of the workshops and things. Uh, to add to that, you know, as, uh, as someone who's been earth-shatteringly busy in the last 12 months uh, setting up a new a new group, um, you know, the, uh, the the SSI has been very flexible uh, about uh, you know when when there've been diary conflicts and things, uh, and uh, you know the stuff I've been involved in has all been stuff that's uh, that, that's been tremendously uh, synergistic with the work I've been I've been trying to do anyway, and you know where there have been. Uh, tough diary conflicts. Uh, it's uh, it's all been worked out to to have uh, mutual satisfaction. So uh, you know, I, I I can honestly testify that as I say that as as someone who's been been you know has been one of the busiest years of my of my life, and uh, and uh, the SSI has only only enhanced the the excitement and and the fun of, of that year of setting up a new setting up a new group in this year. Okay, excellent. Um, so we have another question. We have a question from Daniel. Um, which is what is the most exciting, important thing of being an SSI fellow? What's it in terms of uh, being an SSI fellow has allowed you to achieve? So, uh, um, James, starting with James this time. So, what's the most single most important thing it's allowed you to achieve being okay. a fellow? Uh, it's the work we've been doing on trying to bring uh, all of the people who are programming scientists and programming researchers across all the uh, uh, across all the different parts of, of the UK uh, research infrastructure, and trying to organise into, into into you know a community and uh, and, and uh, the, the whole research software engineering um, campaign uh, and, and you know forming a, a, a some kind of some kind of, of, of community around that that work has been stuff that uh, I think is going to have a real impact on on the quality of, of research software in the UK. You know we all know that. Uh, that the uh, that science is, is is struggling under a burden of um, of lack of software reuse and, and lack of high quality software and uh, helping to 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 build the the, the 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 community and the status and the mutual support and the and the best practice amongst all of us who are who are working to solve that problem uh, has been something that that I've really contributed to this year and I would have been much further behind in that work without the support and help of the SSI. So that's been the most important and also the most exciting. Although I haven't, of course, yet been on my on my travel trip, I'm sure that going to supercomputing this year will also be very exciting. <laughs> okay, excellent. And Kayla? Um, for me, I would have to say it's been the, the networking that's been done at, at, at the workshops. Um, and I, I've, I'm coming at this from the angle that I'm first an academic and second a uh, research software engineer, as it were. Um, so I'm really learning a lot about 
um, best practices in coding and sharing uh, code and things like that from the SSI and from the fellows and from other people at the workshops. Um, so for me, the, the most exciting thing has been meeting all these people, starting collaborations, and just learning a tremendous amount um, from all of these people. And also, of course, uh, the, the opportunity to be able to travel in order to do that is fantastic. Excellent. Thank you. And Robin? Um, yeah, I sort of almost put my answer into two bits. That I've, um, I think the most exciting thing I'll be doing is, is going off to AGU in, in San Francisco in December. Because uh, that's a really wonderful opportunity for me, and, and also I think for, for SSI and the whole sort of cause of, of software sustainability and, and the useful research. Uh, that hasn't happened yet, so that isn't really the most exciting thing that that's happened. Um, I'd probably say the most exciting thing that's happened so far um, was the opportunity I had to present at the RSPSOC student conference in in Glasgow, where I really got to engage with people in my field. Um, at a sort of quite deep level about software issues that were really specific to the sort of stuff that we're working on and the specific challenges that we have. And that was a, a great opportunity that, that I think I managed to really enhance through my, my work with the Software Sustainability Institute. So that was, that's been really great. Excellent. As we're waiting for any more questions, my, I have a question. Uh, my question was, um, no problem, Daniel. Uh, my question was, how did you find the selection process? So I'll start with Killer. Okay, um, so talking about the, the selection process to become a fellow at the beginning. Yeah. Um, um, how did I find it? Um, I thought it was a really good opportunity to, right from the beginning, uh, meet the people who were involved in the project. So we started with um, a general application. And then once we were shortlisted, um, had a face-to-face uh, -face interview, which I was actually out of the country for. So I attended um, a secondary face-to-face -face interview via Google Hangout, which actually worked quite well. Um, and I was really impressed with that whole setup. And um, it, I gave a, a short, I think it was a five-minute presentation about my research and what I would bring to the SSI as a fellow and what I would hope to gain from the SSI as a fellow. Um, and also we had um, a series of discussions with the other candidates um, and also a bit with uh, Shoaib and um, other members of the of the SSI team. Um, so for me it was just a great introduction. Excellent. Um, James? Um, yeah, it was, uh, it was uh, uh, for me, it was a, a trip up to Manchester, and, uh, and, and uh, after having filled in a form, um, the trip to Manchester was uh, an enjoyable day of uh, um, uh, meeting people and talking about things. Uh, interesting day in itself, in terms of meeting people and talking to people. Uh, you know, the selection day would have been a good conference in its own right. Um, so, uh, so that was fine. Brilliant, uh, Robin. Yeah, basically the same as the other two. Um, the online application form and everything was, was fairly straightforward. Um, and as James said, the, the selection day was really interesting. It's just getting to meet all these sort of people. And I think that was when I really realized that this was something that would be really enjoyable for me as, as the whole the sort of fellowship program would be would be really useful. Um, and just because I got to know these people, got chatting with them, found they were really interesting people. We had similar sort of views on things, but also different views from our different um, different sort of areas of research. And so it was actually really enjoyable. It was, it was intense at times. Trying to fit a presentation into five minutes was, was challenging. And sort of when you're sort of having conversations and people are wandering around and scribbling things on, on bits of paper, it's always a little bit nerve-wracking. But it was actually a really enjoyable day and a lot less sort of nerve-wracking than I thought it might be. Excellent. Excellent. Thanks very much. Um, <laughs> uh, Mr. I've spoken to about the process we undertook to select the fellows. Said it was it was a rigorous process. Did have post people Hello. who had an understanding both people who had an understanding of uh, computational techniques and the people who had an understanding of um, uh, research, um, as well as uh, a secondary meeting where we were very much watching people who were doing discussions. So 
you know, the, the people who did get selected have, you know, everything to be happy about in terms of making it through. So it is uh, a good a good achievement also something for, for, for to have on your on your CV etc. Um, okay, on to the next question. Sorry to go on about this, but I was participate. I use if I was to participate usefully, how many days out would I need to spend on specific SSI works up? Just need a number to get my boss to say yes to it. <laughs> oh dear. Um, Okay. Well, my answer to this, as somebody who's kind of managing the program overall, is uh, you certainly need to be somebody who's who, who's either travelling or interested in travelling to conferences which are related to your uh, work and also have a software angle. Uh, apart from that, there's the selection day, a collaborate, which is one day, collaborations workshop, which is two days, a fellows meeting, uh, which is another couple of days. Uh, which five, and perhaps one more meeting. So maybe seven days, eight days, which are uh, in the in the year, which are kind of specific. Um, but they're not really. You're coming and doing work for the SSI. It's still really work for yourself, but it's from a kind of it's the sort of agenda, sort of a shared agenda, I would say. Um, Mark, I, 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 I really shared, you know, I had exactly the same concerns when I was thinking about applying for, for this. You know, I also have a, a job which is, uh, you know, uh, has a specific set of duties that I have to do, um, uh, you know, not, uh, not the master of my own time. Um, and, uh, I, and, you know, I, I, I'm very convinced that, uh, that uh, you know, that my, my, my management, management line has been, have been uh, happy about the outcomes for, for, for our organization as well as for me uh, from this in terms of organizational profile raising and, uh, the, the, the good of you know the good of, uh, of, of uh, the UCL research IT uh, department as well um, so, uh, so so that's been great okay excellent so um so we have a question from Jamie uh, about what would being a fellow do for their department. I think uh, there's a couple of people here who could, who could answer that. I think I'll start with uh, with Robin. Sorry, was that the um, was that Jamie's question? Sorry, my, yeah. my audio dropped out just now. Um, yeah, um, I think um, the department would, would get some things out of it. It kind of probably depends a bit on what sort of um, sort of stage of your career you are. Um, and, and how that kind of works out. Um, but I mean, I'm I can talk from my perspective as a sort of fairly early career PhD student person. Okay, like great, you're, you're sort of fairly similar situation to me. Um, I think with you getting yourself, one one of the things that happens with the SSI fellowship is is you become more well known. So through your input to various events, through your blogging on the um, SSI blog, if you post things on there, uh, through your participation in conferences that you that you wouldn't. Um, maybe normally be able to get to for financial reasons or, or for other reasons, you become more well known in your field. And of course that makes your department more well known as well. So when I'm presenting something, I don't just say I'm Robin Wilson SSI Fellow, I say I'm Robin Wilson from Geography and Environment at the University of Southampton and also um, a SSI Fellow. Um, similarly when I'm blogging and, and so on, the, the blog that went around quite a lot recently um, about citation files um, had the fact that I was at University of Southampton on it, and, and that's obviously, obviously a good thing. Um, I think also, you know, if, if the department um, to think more broadly about it, apart from just getting their sort of name out there, um, the fact that they're going to have someone internal to the department who's becoming a real expert in some of these issues um, is actually going to be really helpful to them. So you're know, within the whole geography department at Southampton. There's an awful lot of software that's used, there's an awful lot of software development that goes on, even though some people may not think it. And so having someone in the department who can be a sort of person to go to to ask about these things, can be a, a sort of resident expert, is actually quite a good benefit for the um, for the department itself. Um, I'm sure there's various other benefits um, as well. I can't actually think of the top of my head, but I, I, my supervisor generally has been very keen on me on me doing this, and I think he's sort of benefited a, a lot of things out of that. In fact, one, one other thing that, in fact, I've got out of it, apart from saving 
my department money because I've got extra money from elsewhere. Um, also through one of the SSI events that I participated in, I met someone who is um, very interested in giving us some money to work on a on a research project, and we've got a grant into them at the moment. So if we win that grant, then obviously that's a grant that the department can sort of put on its list of grants that it's got, and, and that's also very good for it, as well as being good for me and, and my colleagues in the department who are who are working on that project. Excellent. Okay, James. Yes, just to echo the things Robin said. I mean, you know, uh, the uh, as I was just saying in the text chat, uh, the the, the uh, I think any scepticism my boss might have had melted away when uh, when our, our new department was uh, was mentioned in the Times Higher Education article. Um, so uh, that was quite okay. And Kayla. Um, yeah, I don't know that I have too much more to add to that. Um, just to say that you know what's good for for you is generally also good for your department. Um, and uh, as Robin alluded to, you sort of become a resource uh, in your department for you know you, you become the liaison to the resources that the SSI can provide. So, for example, many of the people in my group uh, in my department have started taking an interest in the uh, seminars and, and workshops that the SSI have been putting on. Um, and also, of course, um, our group was funded uh, to go do this field work in Chile and do this collaboration in Chile. Um, so it's, I mean, it's been something that's more people than just me have, have benefited from my involvement with the SSI within my department, certainly. Excellent. Um, any more questions? Okay. Well, would the uh, while we're waiting for any more questions, would the fellows like to say anything additionally? Not particularly apart from the fact that I think this is a really great opportunity and um, I was kind of questioning whether I should take it at, at, at the beginning um, and sort of thinking, oh, you know, is this a good plan? Is this going to be too much extra work and not give me enough benefit? Or, or is this is actually going to be useful to me? Is it going to be a load of people who, who aren't relevant to my interests at all? And I was, I was completely wrong in those worries. It really has been a, a great opportunity and, and I'm very, very glad that I I took it up about a year ago, and I think most of the rest of the fellows would agree with me. I think all the rest of the fellows would probably agree with me. Well, we should also, of course, add. We should also, of course, add that the the SSI uh, team themselves uh, uh, are, are great people to work with as well. Um, uh, you know, working uh, working with uh, the Neil Chi Hong and Simon Hetrick and, and 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 everybody else has been has been uh, has been one of the benefits too. Excellent. Thanks very much. Sure. Give you the fiver later. <laughs> oh no, it's not just a fiver, is it? No, it's the fellowship. No, no, it's uh, no. We we uh, we very much as the SSI very much enjoy. It, it's a two-way process. We we we've we've uh, we were very lucky to have a wonderful set of fellows and uh, and and very much enjoyed supporting them. Um, okay, so. Moving on to our uh, moving on to our last slide, uh, which is just really to say um, thank you, uh, thank you to all of those who attended, uh, uh, and especially thanks to the fellows. Who really, the, the stars of the fellowship program are the fellows, um, and to the and to Neil, uh, our director, uh, and Alexandra as well. Uh, and also, people who will be watching this recording, thank you very much for taking a, an interest in the material. And we we hope those who who have attended, who are not fellows, and those who are listening, do do apply. Um, as, uh, and the, the benefits are appeal to you. So the material uh, will be available. Uh, the slides will be available soon on the SSI website under the fellowship program page, um, and also uh, perhaps in the next. Um, uh, by early next week, we hope to have a, a video of the webinar up and available. So, thanks everyone for taking part and uh, perhaps be in communication again soon. Bye.